A brine pool is an accumulation of very salty water at the bottom of the ocean. And the water is so salty, or we'd call it saline, that it sits as a pool beneath the seawater. It gives us a window into how oceans are born. And indeed, we know this from 100 million years ago when the Atlantic formed, when it was a baby sea, just starting to open up like the Red Sea is today. But the processes that were going on in the early Atlantic 100 million years ago are very poorly understood. But with the Red Sea, we can watch it in process today. So it's an incredibly powerful analog to the formation of all of the oceans on Earth. Quite recently, a brain pool was found not at the spreading axis of the Red Sea, where there's a lot of volcanic activity, but slightly off it in shallower water. And that gave an indication that maybe they exist in other environments. They'd certainly never been found outside the Red Sea in the Gulf of Aqaba, and they've certainly never been found on the coast, which is where we found it. Yes, they're muddling long along the wall. Uh, it kind of seems surprising that we just, unless it's ginormous, that we just pop across it, right? That's quite likely. Unless it ran the whole length of the bottom of the wall. Yeah. First one in the Northern Red Sea in the Akamai. We'd been driving for eight and a half hours across this barren, abyssal plain. And I felt incredibly guilty because all of the effort had gone into finding nothing. And something changed in the far distance. It looked a little bit murky, and I remember the seafloor was getting darker. And we were starting to approach the wall from the coastline at that point. And I thought, oh, we must now be at the end of the dive and we've failed. But the image got slightly darker, and then as we got closer, there was little bits of seaweed which have washed down from the shallows, but they were floating just above the seafloor in a really weird way. And then the lights from the ROV cast down, and you could see the bow wave from the ROV propagating out across the brine pool, and it was the most beautiful thing. And I remember the first thing I felt was relief. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's you. Oh, that's awesome. Anything that goes in there doesn't move. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure that our eyes are in the water? <laughs> The CTD was the only way that we could get samples of the water back to the surface and also measure the chemical properties of the brine. And we had to have the CTD and the ROV down at the same time because we were using the ROV to see what was going on. And there was a lot of trepidation because they're both tethered to the ship by cables nearly a mile and a half beneath the ship. And there's an incredibly high chance that they're going to get tangled and cause the loss of the ROV, the loss of the CTD, or both. So what we did is we lowered the ROV down and rested it on the brine because the brine is so dense. And once we'd got that positioned, we could give the signal visually of when to trigger the water sample. So the first sigh of relief was when the CTD appeared in the video coming from the ROV, because we knew that it made it down that far without getting tangled. But then to guide it down literally centimeter by centimeter, very slowly to make this very precise point, and then actually seeing the bottle snap close with the water inside it, it was a huge relief. It was very exciting because I don't think this has ever been done before in such a precise way.
there's a lot of life around the brine pool and even within it and it doesn't seem to be coincidence it seems that organisms have learnt about the brine and are using it to their advantage so there were these huge armies of shrimp which live on the rocks looking down into the brine and it seems that when anything goes into the brine by accident before the organism dies and sinks to the bottom of the brine pool where it's inaccessible the shrimp rush in and snatch it from the brine surface and they're using the brine as a trap. The reason why this is so special is that to get this sort of environment you need hydrothermal activity. And if you're going to get hydrothermal activity you need plate tectonics. And if Earth is one of the rare planets which has plate tectonics and that can produce such environments, it's conceivable that life in the universe is very rare indeed. Perhaps we're the only ones. And if we're going to go out into the universe and look for life elsewhere, we're going to be targeting uh, planets or moons like Europa around Jupiter where we understand there's a hydrothermal circulation and you might have brine pools very similar to what we're seeing right now. We nearly missed it. I mean, we were close to giving up. And it just goes to show that if you're at the bottom of the sea and you've got 15 minutes left, push on. It's a privilege. Take every single minute and every single second you've got because you never know what's around the corner. <laughs>